This is a full review of the all-new Ford Cougar or Ford Escape as our American friends call it. Exterior, interior and the driving experience here today on Autogefühl, your number one resource for in the car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars. Thomas in front of the camera, Jonas behind the camera and also a special feature on the plug-in hybrid version of this new generation. So, please join us in Full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go. Now looking at the front, of course, it's a way sportier styling than before. It almost reminds a little bit of Porsche design, you know, with very round floating lines and so on. A big front grille. This one is the Vignale version, so this is the high luxury top trim level, which is, you know, at the end of the day, then double the price in the base version most of the time. What's quite cool is that it has this bright, shiny front grille, but you can also get a base front grille, or when you pick the ST line, the sportier version, then you go with a black front grille, so depending on your liking. The light unit here is optional with this full LED dynamic light function, which is also built in here, and the daytime running light is underneath. And overall, the dimensions have indeed changed a little bit, about a four centimeters or about two inches wider already here in the front. 4 meters 62, 15 foot 2 or 182 inches is the length of the new Cougar or Escape. It's about 9 centimeters or 3.5 inches longer than before. Also a slight increase in wheelbase have they done. Also 17 to 20 inch wheels maximum. These are indeed the maximum 20 inch wheels. Of course comfort wise we cannot expect too much from that. It would be a better compromise to go for smaller wheels if you want a better compromise between this look and also still some riding comfort. Here the Vignale version again has a special badge and also this chrome style lower indicator right there. So definitely the elegant experience but of course you'll also be fine with the other trim levels. Especially here with the new generation is that we have this round shape rather here to make it sportier looking. Also some stronger shoulders and that's definitely a different design approach than, than actually before. So we really would be interested if you like this new styling of the new Cougar or the Escape. Technology wise the chassis is now a little bit stiffer and also lost 90 kilograms in weight. However, since we have the plug-in hybrid version here today, this again adds some weight due to the battery. We'll see out if that plays any effect in the driving later. In the rear we can see that the tail lamps are now more horizontal and also have this 3D sculpturing right there, so a little bit more modern than before. In the lower end, again, the Vignale contrast. Well, this white color here today, it also looks pretty cool as long as it's clean. That's the thing with white cars, definitely. And the exhaust pipes here, those are really just real, so no fake exhaust at all, at least in this engine version here. We'll see about time, you know, when we test different engine versions, but today also, of course, about the plug-in hybrid. Today, and the most interesting model is the 2.5 liter petrol engine, which is mated with an electric motor, so it's the plug-in hybrid, front-wheel drive, 225 horsepower system output, 9.2 seconds is the acceleration figure, battery size 14 0.4 kilowatt hours, 50 kilometers or 30 miles, all electric range. Well, that's about this one here. There is also a built-in hybrid available, a 2.5 liter petrol engine with the same petrol engine basically, also front wheel drive. This will also be interesting. And then there are also normal turbo petrol engines, 1.5 liter, 120 or 150 horsepower. And on diesel side, 1.5 liter, 120 horsepower or 2 liter, 150 horsepower, new MHEV diesel or 190 horsepower, then also possible with all-wheel drive. Well, but again, the most interesting model will be the most electrified. So that's also the reason why we take this one here out today. It's the newest one. Always the best just for you, right? Well, in the front left driver's side here, you can 
open the electric charging plug in function here is also illuminated very nice AC of course and we do not have the exact figure here kilowatt figure at the time we shoot this review but even with a normal household plug it would already charge fully in about four hours This is the car key. Does not really feel quality wise or something, but it, at least it's light. Then keyless entry is when you put your hand here on the outside. And also the mirror flips in if you have that option or hand on the inside again. Then door closing sound. Yeah, I think we've heard better. What's interesting here although is this feature again. We know it from other forts already. So it's this door protection, you know, narrow parking lots and so on. So there's always a cool idea. Then instead of the doors, we have a soft touch material right there. Then this um, wood decor, but I think it is not real wood, but it looks quite fancy, definitely. In the Vinyala trim, optional B and O sound system. Pretty shallow, however, how the inside of the doors is laid out for bottles and so on, but it still works for smaller bottles. And then we have an all black interior right here. Also, fabric seats would be base. These are actually the animal skin seats, but there are different trims available. Also, for example, the ST line um, offers some fabric mix seats, and also the titanium trim level offers a mix of fabric and leatherette. It always depends on the market, of course, but for Vinyala, you pay a lot of extra money for a lot of animal skin material, so that's not really paying off. Then the steering wheel, you can see classic Ford style, we also know that from other vehicles so far. So the first impression of the interior is, you know, not as dramatic as we've seen on the exterior. But still, if you compare the predecessor, they still kept up the game here. And getting inside, we have this nice luxury feature here that when we turn on the ignition, the seat is going forward then a little bit. So we have to remember to keep it also in this position then when we get in the rear again. Only thing is here when oh, duh, 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 duh. <laughs> this car is always complaining sound wise also when you um, for example leave the light on uh, or something and you get these sounds and so on. Overall the seating position here as for the head clearance no problem one meters 86 or 6 foot 1. This is the version with panoramic roof but it still works for tall people. The surface of the seat is pretty stiff pretty hard so not that good for comforts. So if you have a fabric surface it will be softer to the body overall would recommend that. The seating position itself is upright and good and you also have about four centimeters or two inches more shoulder space than in the predecessor because the car is a little bit wider so it feels you know a little bit more airy in the front also since the new instruments and so on cleaned it up everything. That's actually a quite good first impression. In this case we also have the electric seats here, front and also the back part of the seats for example and also with an electric lumbar support. Interior overview is again pretty much straight forward. What? <laughs> so straight forward for this Ford. That means everything is easy to control. The build quality is also okay, not top notch, but again here, soft touch here on the top part, then this uh, wood style deco element is also quite fancy. This is also soft touch. The AC unit looks a little bit old school, but the good thing is you still have a manual AC unit. You can control it very well while driving, also for the seat heating and so on. So I really prefer to have that. Let's continue in the down for first here. USB-C and USB-A device, so two available to charge you for or inductive charging is possible. Then in the lower part, adaptive cup holders, and this shifting lever here is quite in interesting. It's not a lever, it's this turning um, gear selector, and we know that, for example, from Jaguar Land Rover, L for more recuperation mode, D for normal driving mode, and neutral, and R for reverse. And we now already hear the electric sound. And cool is when you're, for example, in D, and then when you know, when Jonas um, focuses on this one here now, on, on the ring, so when I open the door, magic, the car automatically 
puts it in P, but not only in an electric way, but really turning this ring here from D to P. <laughs> it's really uh, an interesting function. And then more interesting even here in the lower part. So we have driving modes, for example, um, like for snow or so, or if you want to turn up the gears um, a little bit higher, more relevant for petrol engines. Here is the EV driving mode that you can switch between the electric driving modes. We'll show you these different modes then later in the driving part. So, um, you know, spot to put all your stuff. And then there's this armrest covered with the red and then you raise it up. This could be a little bit better attached. And below we have more space, a little one, and then more underneath and with a 12 volt power supply. Infotainment screen, 8 inch. Usually it always comes with that most markets directly get it standard, but the GPS then is optional. Here there's the Apple CarPlay view and we have the um, oh, it's an old school discotheque style, uh, but in the vocal version. It's actually quite nice from this B&O sound system. Um, I'm, I heard clearer ones yet, but of course it's worth the upgrade if you're a music lover. Uh, we can also test it with another song, let's see. Yeah, has a quite good surround sound indeed. Yeah, because you feel you hear that there's a top speaker behind it, so that's actually quite cool. So, and then when you go back to this Ford menu, you have to go for the sync here, but when you have put in the CarPlay, you cannot go to the car internal GPS, then you're over directed here. So, I have to unplug the Apple CarPlay, Android Auto is also available and then I can go to the car internal GPS system and use it like this. Yeah, I think you should have both possibilities. Again, the GPS is an option. This GPS software is an option for this system. And most of the time you will be using your smartphone mirroring, I guess, and that um, this is basically this home view and yeah, it basically does the job. It's nothing super fancy, this system. And then when you put in reverse gear, you also have the rear view camera right there with helping lines. Also quite okay as for the resolution. Could be, of course, a little bit better. And what's also cool is that you have a separate button right here for the front view camera, if you have that option. And there's a secondary option then for the very front that you don't damage your very front of the car. Base is still analog, optional than 12.3 inch digital instruments here for the Cougar or for the Escape. And you can see on the left side the normal speed. In the middle part you can change some things around then. So you have the possibilities there. Like here, select screens for example, whatever you want to have there. And on the right side actually this would be then the power meter for the plug-in hybrid version where you can also see like the recuperation and so on. And in the lower part you can see we've depleted half of the battery now. Hard to pick up the head-up display on camera but in this case also hard to pick it up with the real eyes because it's very small and also relatively close to the hood. You can also adjust it a little bit but the thing is here it's not a proper head-up display projected into windscreen but on a separate glass layer. So what about the rear? Let's take a first look. Oh also this now, protecting mechanism is the same here also for the rear doors. Don't only the rear door closing sound, that sounds a little bit weird indeed. Then, soft touch also at the inside of the doors and the rear, that's quite rare, especially in this segment, so that's well done. And you know, wheelbase has been increased just a little bit. Let's see out, well, let's see how that plays out. So, there's also this gap at the back of the seat. Um, the rear seat is a little bit high overall. That's actually good for children and also to install some um, child seats. Yeah, we also have the <laughs> children back on screaming at the moment. So here with the knees, it does directly fit. I would have imagined maybe with the longer wheelbase that we have a little bit more leg room, but it's still okay for four tall adults. But you see, when you put the seat a little bit higher, it's a little bit more relaxing than for the rear passengers. But again, it's very well optimized for children here. Although I do also fit here, headroom still remains. And isofix here at the outside of the seats. So that's an again then for the child seats. Then here in the middle part, you have adaptive cup holders. That's a good quality actually. And then you are a little bit more flexible with the whole bench here as well, because you can slide this forward to have a little bit more trunk length even, or backward then for the maximum legroom. That's cool. And what's also cool, 
you can also adjust the back part here if you want a little more upright or if you want a little bit more back so that's actually good then in the middle part this is also one of my favorite features you have a real power supply depending also on your country but then you can for example also charge a macbook there and also an option that you have heated rear seats if you like the optional panoramic roof is actually quite impressive it goes all over the vehicle now you can also open it actually like this then you get even more fresh air in so let's see how far we can yeah this is the maximum it doesn't go back too far actually but the glass area goes back also good that in this case here we have a very bright ceiling that's cool and then there's also this bright sun cover if you want to block out the sun just a little bit at least then you still have it bright in the interior right here Ta -da. <laughs> so what about the trunk you can also open it here with this foot kick opening mechanism if you have picked that option so one kick and then it opens so about 435 liters with the normal cougar or with the escape here you lose 30 liters with the pf but i think you can live with that you can even have some more space here underneath to store your cables and stuff so and then these are the basic dimensions length here is about 85 centimeters the width a good meter and the height well uh, with the cover here it's a little bit tricky um, so this would be about 55 centimeters but the thing is here this is a little bit like like a loose cover so to say and when you put things in that are a little bit higher mm, yeah then it uh, strangely folds sometimes so not sure if that's the best solution you flip the seats on here or release them and the total capacity is about yeah maybe that's hmm okay that's live so let's put in again and release once more yeah there we go so and now take a look at the overall length you know the car is a little bit longer now and here we are just over one meter sixty in the middle here you know it would even be a little bit longer just a little bit you can also of course also load a little bit through so last but not least what about when we put some luggage in right here just to show you the dimensions or some backpack like this and you know it happened then when you put it in the rear and then you close it that again this one gets actually out of place like this so yeah again hmm. <laughs> child safety that's totally fine so very sensitive approach also as for the torque and let's see you can see it here now with the folding top and in this case it worked quite well yeah and that's what i meant i so i opened it again i thought it worked well and then we have this situation here and i have to put it back in place again so yeah maybe ford engineers think about this solution <laughs> once more other than that very well usable trunk Welcome to Thomas's driving lounge with the all new Ford Cougar or the Ford Escape. And we're starting here in the all electric mode because we're driving the plug in hybrid version. And that's, of course, always a pleasure. By the way, here, this is the Ford plant in Cologne. So the big German plant by Ford. And this is also the reason because it's really huge. They produce a lot of cars here. Um, why Ford somewhat counts as a German manufacturer in Germany because they're also producing here majorly. Yeah, interesting story, definitely. So, driving it in the EV mode, and that's of course cool because it's all silent. You hear a little bit, of course, that on the outside, mandatory now from, you know, like an electric, someone, something found that it's not all silent on the exterior. And of course, always relaxing, good that we have no local emissions. And the projected range also tells me at the moment, because we are at the moment also fully charged, is about 50 kilometers or 30 miles. And that's actually quite okay. You can use a lot of that, for example, for daily commuting and so on. So other than that, in the all EV mode, you got a decent acceleration. So you got some plug-in hybrids, hybrids which are 
just laid out to be supported but this one can be driven all electric no problem and it's really a lot of fun definitely you know because all silent on the on the one hand and it's also powerful on the other hand when you just put the throttle through so really fine with this with the acceleration I can also do like a standstill acceleration of course as well um, usually it's the case that even though when you are in this EV mode, here's the River Rhine by the way, so that the combustion engine hops on, that you feel a, like a threshold in the, in the pedal. So let's just test how it's laid out right here. Interesting. So it stays actually in the electric mode. That's um, just with the Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in hybrid so far. And I think that's actually quite cool. And the power is also sufficient for that, you know. So let's pass the cyclist first in a safe way. Always keeping you know, maximum distance possible to cyclists because, you know, when you're a cyclist yourself, you know, oh, it's the old DS. There we go. Yeah, the, the electric acceleration is actually quite fine. So we're really, really happy with that. We can, for example, accelerate out of this traffic light here situation. And we can also like show you a standstill. And this is always cool when you are in this traffic-like situations that it's predominantly silent. But like this electric sound is um, one of the rare EV cars or plug-in hybrid cars where you actually hear the sound that's generated on the um, exterior or also on the interior. Maybe we can hear it even... No, it's even better to hear when we have the windows closed. This vehicle, by the way, equipped with the optional noise cancellation. So picking up the sounds that are generated. Oh, let's accelerate. Plop, that's 50 kilometers an hour. So you see, it's not like an explosion, but it's definitely quite reasonable. And again, I found it quite cool that it actually stays in the electric mode. If you want to change that, you know, you can do that any time, you know, with this drive mode selector here. So you have all electric driving. Then there's EV later, that EV charge is being left for later for like an emission zone that might, you know, occur at some point. Or you can also charge it. Then the combustion engine hops on and charges the battery. That's possible. Or you put it to the so-called auto EV, normal operation mode. And then the car is deciding on its own what to do. So that can be like this, when we're not accelerating hard, that we just stay in the all electric mode. And you know that's then also fine for the car. But here then in this mode, when I would just jump the throttle, then the combustion engine gets active and is using both powers. Just EV driving, by the way, is limited to a speed of 135 kilometers an hour. So that's like 80 miles an hour, something like that. Should should be, yeah, approximately like that. So you can always drive in the auto mode, of course, or you want to be like in the EV mode and want to you know use most electric power as possible and then recharge again. I think it really depends on your driving profile, what makes more sense. Well, about the all new Kuga or Escape in general, you definitely still feel a resemblance to the outgoing model. So you feel it's not like a completely different car. It has grown a little bit in size, but that's not, you know, so significantly notable. It's a little bit cleaner from the layout. You have a good overview. Um, from the sporty exterior, you would think maybe the overview is worse or you feel cramped inside, but that's actually not the case. So, you know, what you might think, um, just from the visual per per perception there in this case, is actually not true. And it's actually very easy to ease this car around. It's not too big, has still like this good compromise size. You know, we talked about earlier, we're driving the Vignale version and this one here is also equipped with the optional 20 inch wheels, which look amazing, of course. But the thing is, the ride gets a little bit stiff by that. So if the riding comfort is something to your concern, then I would not go for the 20 inch wheels. Um, again, they look amazing, but you do feel like when you're like going through some bumps, it almost feels like we would have a sport suspension or so, but it's not the case for this vehicle and not for, not for this trim level. So 
always have to think about what's you know your your major objective then when buying this vehicle. I would definitely not go for the 20 inch wheels. Head up display, taking a look at that. Um, it's not that helpful as it would be directly projected into the windscreen with this separate layer. That's of course like a cost saving method. But again, it's good to have that one, you know, than having nothing. So here also in this automatic driving mode, of course, we can use this EV driving standing still. And of course, everything you know, is silent again and no emissions. And that's also where we you know what, what the plug-in hybrids are made for, definitely. As for the noise cancelling technology, so far it has been quite silent in here. We'll also um, you know, first want to show some city driving and stuff. Uh, let's also head out to the motorway very soon to show some higher speed and also how the noise insulation performs there. I can just say really enjoying driving this one all silent, all electric. And again, it's really powerful enough to drive you know, only on that. Actually, uh, at the lower speeds, it's really, really silent in here. So, um, and Jonas even uh, mentioned that um, as we were just entering the car and standing still, it was like, oh, it's very silent in here. So, um, it's really notable. So, obviously, this technology is also working. The steering, by the way, um, from time to time, it feels, a, let's say, a little bit numb for a Ford steering wheel. Um, usually, we're used to that they offer like a very good natural driving fun feeling. Here I have to say it's a little bit, um, let's say a little bit lax, <laughs> if we can say that. So um, I would wish a little bit better feeling um, in, in the steering as for that. Suspension, it's really, you know, hard to rate. There's a new Puma, also presented you, to you later, uh, earlier, of course. <laughs> um, what's that? Ah, okay, this is um, the speed speed recognition so it says he likes 30 kilometers an hour and warning me I was a little bit too fast yeah, that can also be quite helpful if you maybe didn't pick up any you know any traffic sign or something so the handling is overall quite good and neutral and again suspension you would say maybe oh the suspension is so too stiff but I wouldn't say so because that's really um, up to these 20 inch wheels so it's always an a problem to to you know, really refer to the suspension in this case, but indeed um, the car feels a little bit stiffer and sportier than the outgoing model, and so that's also something where you see the exterior and it promises basically what it holds. So would I directly switch them from the old model? Is there like a huge difference? I think visually definitely. I mean that's something completely different. Um, then again, you know, from the rest of the features and driving, um, I think you do feel improvements, especially here as for the interior build quality. When I was taking a look at the very early production models um, at the motor show, for example, it was in New York, I think. New York or LA? Uh, was it LA? I think it was LA. I was a little bit um, disappointed, but what I see now here, um, you know, they really stepped up the game. It's not that they would be class leading in the overall build quality here, but it gives you then, you know, a good feeling when driving. This also here being the top trim, but very, very expensive. Again, I would think twice um, before going to, for the Vignale, not only because of the animal skin seats, also because of the general worst price performance ratio. So it's better than definitely to pick one of the other models. The electric ranger, by the way, hasn't um, significantly reduced. Um, so that's all. It's like a, it's not, it's like a Sion or small electric vehicle. Um, so because we always can use this recuperation, um, when you're in a normal driving mode, by the way, there's no harsh recuperation. So it's rather some, uh, some, some rolling from the car. Um, So you use the brakes yourself, and then when you hit the brakes, then actually the real recuperation, recuperation sets in. And then you can, of course, when you're rolling downhill or something, always can regenerate more power. In general, rolling is more efficient than recuperation, unless you want to brake anyway, you know. But there's different philosophies. Usually the true all-electric models 
they have stronger recuperation then also favor this uh, one pedal feeling um, but then here let's see if it's a difference between the auto mode and the EV mode there's some recuperation but slightly let's change again to the auto mode it's the same yeah so it's um, basically set out to have some recuperation then but just slightly you know so if you want to have real um, deceleration then you would rather just hit the normal brake and then of course first the recuperation is being used and if even more braking power is being needed then actually the normal brakes set in but overall positive driving um, the silence is really very well notable and if governmental benefits make sense for you and if you have the charging infrastructure at home I think it definitely makes sense that you go for this new plug-in hybrid model so um, it's actually adding you know something more to, to the drive of course it's extra in the price but then again when you're still in the country with some tax benefits and so on this can actually also be evened out so have to pay attention to that if that really makes sense for you driving wise I mean it's always more fun in this EV mode and now we accelerate from 40 to 100 Plop. that's already it and this was now the combined acceleration so EV and combustion engine and it of course went quicker and then we also finally heard something of the combustion engine so when you need you know, more acceleration it's always there then on the left side of the steering wheel you can set the cruise control also available in adaptive way right here then the distance to this car in front of us is being kept so let's move over here and this Porsche Macan will probably drive faster than allowed and then yeah thank you because then we can also see the blind spot monitor there it's reacting a little bit late maybe not that early um, but definitely great to have that you see that flashing in the in the um, inside my mirror there here also the active lane keeping assist so let's stress that see here the car is being kept in the lane also when I uh, try to force it again being centralized um, but you see there are quite a lot of I mean, like sometimes nervous reaction from that and the steering wheel then you know feels a little bit loose then you can also deactivate it here at the ste steering wheel and then you have you know don't have that if you don't fancy this lane keeping assist you know um, yeah but then again even if it's deactivated the steering feels a little bit too light for my taste in this lower you know angle then let's go back to the all electric mode again but again when you are in the um, automatic driving mode and you have like rolling situations now where the speed was being reduced and so on then the car does that for you anyway so really depends on how you want it as a driving there is by the way also this L driving mode and when you then actually leave the throttle you know there's this like construction site and you know at the, at the bridge then you have more recuperation so that would also be an option press this L mode and when you then leave the throttle you can see there's more like approximately double the recuperation so if you are predominantly driving this one in the EV mode and then say you know I fancy more this um, one pedal feeling and so on this could actually be a possibility for you switching to this L mode Wow, I mean, when there's a construction site here on the motorway, it feels so slow to drive then here. It's really <laughs> very, very strange then here to drive around. But soon we can, you know, drive a little bit faster. Tells me also, by the way, engine enabled. Um, you know, sometimes there are some situations where the car probably needs that. And then same with the plug-in hybrid um, of other manufacturers. The engine is being on. Let's see again, check. We are in the all electric driving mode. Yeah, but I mean, when the engine is at low RPMs, you also can hardly hear it actually. So here we are again. This compact size of the vehicle still feels good. Also, you know, we don't 
have to squeeze ourselves even in the construction side lane. This car is also equipped with a heated windscreen. I always have problems seeing through that. I always see these lines. Some others say, been driving for that, you know, with that for years and I don't really see it. It's actually no problem to me. I always see it, yeah, but um, I think it's also a matter of preference. If you have a problem with that, you just order um, a trim level or then a version without the Eastern. Sitting once again the cruise control. And then of course the L mode does not really make sense. Um, so you press it just again, and then it's also once again released. Yeah, this driving mode selector here from the car is actually also quite nice. So in here on the motorway, when we have also more noise around us, and we've just been driving 100 kilometers an hour and or 60 miles an hour on this faster, um, faster lane there, this was also really, really silent. So to me, one of the most significant changes of this generation, obviously, especially when you have this active noise cancelling technology, is that the car is more silent and therefore also feels a little bit more refined. So, and that's of course even maybe a little bit, you know, even better combination when you combine this one with a plug-in hybrid model. This really makes sense. And again, fuel economy wise, it's always hard to tell yeah, what's the fuel consumption with the plug-in hybrid vehicle? Hmm. It always depends on how you're really using it, you know? How often are you recharging? What's the percentage of petrol use? And usually the normal petrol consumption would be the same as there would no be no battery in, the, in there when it's depleted. Um, but then again, like a, presenting a realistic mixed fuel um, consumption is almost impossible then with the PF models, um, at least when you want to have like a really um, honest figure or something. So, but this one is, no, no, no matter what laid out to be that you use the EV driving as often as possible. Of course, that's not always being done. So um, there are also surveys where they, that shows that depending on the region also and on the infrastructure that people buy the, the plug-in hybrids for the tax benefits and then don't recharge them. Yeah, I hope this will change. Um, also when the infrastructure is being uh, built up actually. So let's see about that. Yeah, but so far, again, good as for the noise insulation. That's cool. Steering could be a little bit better in the feeling because we know that from a lot of other Ford models. Suspension wise, yeah, a little bit biased here by these huge wheels. So um, definitely go for smaller wheels. Other than that, I think we have a you know, pretty solid driving part here also with the new Cougar or with the new Escape. And now to our conclusion for today with the all-new Ford Cougar, with the all-new Ford Escape. Well, on the exterior, definitely a sportier styling than before. Almost looks like this SUV coupe-ish. And does it hold it also in driving? Yes, indeed, it is a little sportier ride than before. The stiffness of the chassis has also been improved. And especially here with the plug-in hybrid version, it's a lot of fun to drive. With 20-inch wheels, of course, a little bit too stiff in the ride. You have to pay attention to that when ordering the car. But especially as the plug-in hybrid version, the EV driving is quite efficient and also is a lot of fun actually. You have enough power, you can drive all electric. The question is, do you have the charging infrastructure at home or at work or both in the best case? Then it really makes sense for you also. Financially, it depends on governmental benefits and also on the long-term usage of the vehicle. But definitely probably the most interesting version. There will also be the mild hybrids and also the inbuilt hybrids. So a lot of hybridization at the new Ford models, definitely. So the styling, definitely pretty sporty, you no, know, different than the predecessor, but I overall like it. On the interior, the build quality has been upgraded, although it's definitely not best in segment. That's not where Ford really puts the focus on. The riding, again, is pretty decent. Would have wished a little bit more feeling in the steering wheel, and I think the best thing about this car is the noise insulation with this active noise cancelling system. It is somehow a different feeling than the physical noise insulation that manufacturers put a lot of effort in. Here it's a different approach. It definitely feels different on the inside. You probably got to test it yourself if it's fine to you. To us it was actually quite fine. 
Then the Vinyala version we had here today, this top trim level is of course not a good price performance ratio. Then the vehicle is about 50, 51K and that's of course too expensive for a Ford Cougar or for a Ford Escape. This car really makes sense when it's at a good price performance ratio, 25K entry level, maybe some, some equipment in it at lowest trim or middle trim level. Then it really makes sense when you get a like 30,000 euro or dollar car and then it also again placed out this good price performer price performance ratio that's also why this car has been so successful in the predecessor so what do you think here about our driving today please give us your feedback also tune into some of the competitor cars we will link them in the video description or in the pinned comment see you there or at one of our next new reviews thank you so much for tuning in